What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Over the last few weeks, I've been compiling data on every single Bassmaster Elite Series event from 2011 to 2020. Now I've used this data to come up with some really cool conclusions that will definitely help your tournament bass fishing in 2021. Let's get into it. Before we jump to the first conclusion, I want to give you a better idea of the data points I captured for this analysis. You can basically group them into three groups. The first is basic lake information for every lake that was fished in every tournament. The second is the place that each angler finished. And third is the bait, style, and technique that each of the anglers used in each of the top three places. Using this data set, I was then able to create charts that I could filter by all the elements I captured to come to some really cool conclusions. Number one. Shallow water fishing is slightly better than offshore fishing. The first thing I want to analyze is what percentage of the top three finishers fish offshore versus fish shallow in all of the events from 2011 to 2020. Given all the advances in electronics over this time period, I expected that more top finishers would be fishing offshore versus shallow. To clarify the definitions of shallow water fishing and offshore fishing that I use for this analysis, I define shallow water fishing as any time the angler is fishing less than a cast length away from the shoreline or when they're fishing in less than 5 feet of water. On the flip side, my definition of offshore fishing is whenever an angler is fishing more than one cast length away from the shoreline and is in deeper than 5 feet of water. Therefore, by my definition, if an angler is fishing out in the middle of the lake, but is still fishing in less than 5 feet of water, that's going to be considered shallow water fishing. You're only fishing offshore if you're more than the cast length away from the bank, and you're fishing in deeper than 5 feet of water. Taking another look at these results, a lot of anglers might be surprised to see that shallow water fishing is actually more effective than offshore fishing in high level tournament competition. One thing you have to take note of is that a lot of these Bassmaster Elite Series events take place around the spawn, whether that's the pre-spawn, the spawn, or the post-spawn. And then when you get into the summertime of the year when offshore fishing is the most effective, they actually go up north to start fishing for smallmouth. What this means is that the data might be a little bit skewed towards shallow water fishing based on the season of the year the anglers are fishing. However, it also means that if you're going to be a tournament fisherman, you have to be proficient at both shallow water and offshore fishing if you're going to be successful. It's very hard to specialize in one or the other because the top patterns have a 50% chance basically of being either shallow or offshore, so you have to be versatile to be a successful professional tournament angler. A few years ago, I actually tried to determine which style of fishing generated the most big fish from my own personal fishing trips. To do this, I took 22 fishing trips of shallow and 22 fishing trips offshore from past YouTube videos, and then count up the number of three and four pound bass I caught in all of those videos. My results showed that I caught more big fish offshore than up shallow during those fishing trips. This led me to conclude that offshore fishing might produce a few more big fish than fishing up shallow. However, if we compare my results to the Elite Series results, you can see that offshore fishing is actually a little bit less effective on the Elite Series level than shallow water fishing. Now there are two possible reasons why my results might differ from the Elite Series results. The first is that offshore fishing might be more effective on lakes in my region of the country versus the lakes that the Elite Series goes to. The Elite Series fish all over the country on a variety of lakes, and that might lead me to catch more big fish offshore versus the combined group of lakes that the Elite Series fish. To test this theory, I filtered my data set based on lake type and only selected the lake types there in my region of the country. What I found is that actually shallow water fishing is a lot more effective on lakes in my region of the country than offshore fishing. 59% of the top finishes come up shallow versus 41% of the finishes offshore. What these results show me is that the lakes in my region of the country are actually better shallow water fisheries than offshore fisheries. This is not that surprising because I fish a lot in Oklahoma and Arkansas, which is known for having a lot of good, shallow, muddy water fisheries. What this means though is that I spend a lot of time fishing offshore on lakes that aren't set up that well for offshore fishing. And in my personal fishing trips, I probably spend 90 to 95% of my time fishing offshore versus 5 to 10% of the time up shallow. 
As a result, every time I launch my boat, I'm putting myself at a disadvantage by fishing offshore versus fishing up shallow. Now if we take a look at the results, you can see that 41% of the top finishes still come offshore, so there are offshore fish to be caught. However, shallow water patterns are going to be more effective on most fishing days and during most fishing tournaments. Now the reason my results show that I catch more fish offshore versus up shallow is because I spend more time fishing offshore and I'm more proficient at techniques. So even if the fish aren't positioned very well offshore, I'm still able to go out there and catch what fish are available. However, again, I'm basically handicapping myself and making fishing more difficult for myself in my region of the country. One thing I plan on doing in the future is fishing local and regional tournaments on my lakes. And if I go in those tournaments trying to focus offshore in every single event, I am going to be handicapping myself and probably setting myself up for failure. Therefore, to be the most successful, I need to start developing a shallow water game. And I'm actually going to be doing some videos with Randy where he's going to be showing me how to fish different patterns up shallow in this region of the country and I'm going to show you guys the process of how I learn those techniques to become a better shallow water angler so I can be competitive in tournaments on my lakes. I'll still be doing the offshore content as always but I'm mixing up a little bit so I can improve my fishing and become a better angler. Now obviously these results are specific to the lakes in my region of the country and they're going to differ depending on what type of lake you fish. Therefore, I'm actually going to make this data set and all these pivot tables available on my website, fishthomit.com, and I'll explain later on in this video how you can actually get this data set so you can run these tests for yourself on your lakes and also mess with all the other factors that I gathered in this data set. Number 2. Drop shots are dominant. After analyzing the success of shallow versus offshore fishing, I want to take a deeper dive into the baits that produced the most number of top three finishes over the last 10 years on the Elite Series. And when I actually created a chart with the data, the results were pretty shocking at first. If we take a look, you can see that the drop shot has almost two times as many top three finishes as the second best bait, which is a creature bait. This was really shocking to me because a drop shot, in my opinion, is more of like a finesse bait and you wouldn't really associate it with catching big fish that you would need to win tournaments. However, one thing you have to keep in mind is that about 15% of the Bassmaster Elite Series events over the last 10 years are on lakes up north that have predominantly smallmouth bass in them, and the drop shot is far and away the best bait for catching smallmouth bass and catching big smallmouth bass at that. If we filter the data to just look at lakes where smallmouth is the dominant species, you can see that almost every single top three finish over the last 10 years came on a drop shot on these fisheries. These are places like the Great Lakes, the St. Lawrence River, or Lake St. Clair. Therefore, if we filter out all of the lakes where smallmouth is the dominant species, you can see the drop shot is not nearly as effective. It still is in the top 10 in terms of baits that produce top 3 finishes, however, it basically gets shifted down several spots and the creature bait becomes the number one bait that generates top 3 finishes. Now one thing to call out is that when I was generating this data set, I just picked the top bait that each angler was using in their top 3 finish. Almost every single angler was using multiple baits to get their top three finish, but I just picked the bait that I saw them catch the most fish on during the Bassmaster television shows or during Bassmaster Live. The other thing you have to consider is that guys might not tell the full truth on which baits they're using both on camera as well as in articles that are published by Bassmaster. This is understandable because they want to maintain a competitive edge and therefore I had to do some digging to figure out the actual baits the guys were throwing. So I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus obviously, these guys are just trying to make a living. But I did try to do some detective work to determine the actual baits these guys are fishing and these are the baits that I found. So it may not be perfect but it's going to be pretty close. Now that we know the baits that produce the most number of top three finishes across a few different types of lakes on the Elite Series, I wanted to filter down this data to be a little bit more specific to my types of lakes and my style of fishing. Therefore, I filtered the data by the lakes in my region of the country and by the baits that guys used when they were primarily fishing offshore in these Elite Series events when they finished in the top three. The results were actually really surprising and really cool because I recently did a video 
on what I call the Big Bass Index, which is basically a way of determining which baits produce the biggest fish based on my own fishing results. And you can check out that video using the link up above, and the results from that video line up almost perfectly with the results from this Elite Series data. As you guys know, I spend the majority of my time fishing offshore, and therefore, my Big Bass Index results are basically going to be focused on offshore fishing in my region of the country. And if we compare the data from my video, as well as from the Elite Series data, you can see that the baits are almost identical, both in order, as well as the type of bait. The only difference you'll see is that the Alabama rig is really effective for me, where the swim bait is very effective on the Elite Series. And the reason for that, obviously, is because the Elite Series guys can't throw an Alabama rig. It is banned. Therefore, if I was limited to only fishing swim baits and not being able to throw the Alabama rig, I can guarantee you the swim bait would just take that place on the chart of the Big Bass Index, and I would have the exact same top baits for my region of the country for offshore fishing. This is actually really cool because it seems like there's a correlation between this Elite Series data I collected and the actual results I'm seeing on the water from my own fish catches. This also means that I should be able to filter the data set to shallow water baits and then figure out which baits are going to be the most effective for me when I'm fishing up shallow. So that's exactly what I did. I filtered the data by the lakes in my region of the country and then by all of the top three finishes where the anglers focused on shallow water fishing. This gives me the top five shallow water baits in my region of the country. Because the data was correlated so well between my offshore baits and the results from these Elite Series events, I have a good feeling that if I throw these baits up shallow, I'm going to do really well in tournaments and catch a lot of big fish. What's also cool is that my first conclusion was that I need to be fishing shallow water on my lakes to perform better in tournaments. However, I didn't know which baits I needed to throw, but now I have a list of five baits that I need to get better at. Now, currently, I'm pretty good at fishing a medium diving crankbait, and I've thrown a lot of medium diving crankbaits in my videos in the past. You can check out a bunch of those videos on my channel. However, I haven't really made that many videos about flipping a jig, throwing a spinnerbait, fishing a hard topwater bait, or a jerkbait. I've caught fish on all of those baits before, obviously, but I'm definitely not an expert on any of them. However, I do know someone who is, and that's Randy. So my plan is to actually have Randy go out in the boat with me and explain how to use all of these shallow water baits in tournament situations and try to replicate what he does up shallow using this specific set of baits. And I'll be documenting the process of learning each of these styles of baits with Randy and show you how to actually perfect each of these techniques over a series of weeks or months. I'm also going to be making this data set available to everyone because I feel like it could be very helpful for any tournament fisherman because you can filter it to pretty much any lake type across the country, any style of fishing, and get a set of baits that you need to work on to catch fish in your region of the country. All you have to do is go over to fishthemoment.com and there's going to be a page where you can download this data set. I'm going to be charging $20 for the data because it took me like a week and a half of just watching a bunch of TV shows and different things, put all the data together. It was a lot of work. I put every data point in line by line, cell by cell. So it was a lot of work. So hopefully you guys wouldn't mind helping support uh, the channel, helping support the time I put into it. But I do feel like it's a very valuable resource. And I'm going to be leaving instructions on how to use the file there's going to be an Excel version for Microsoft Excel users, and I'm also going to make a version that's available on Google Sheets. And you don't need to have anything other than just a Google account. So pretty much anyone who has access to a computer will be able to use this data set and filter it, and I'm going to have detailed instructions explaining how all of it works on the website and when you purchase the file. So even if you're not super tech savvy, you should be able to make the data set work and filter it to what you need to do. Hopefully you guys will find this helpful. I still have one more really cool finding I wanna share with you guys, so don't leave quite yet, but hopefully you'll find this data useful. Number three, fish the flats. After taking a look at the baits, I looked at a ton of other factors and there's a lot of cool insights you can pull from this data file, but one that I found that was really surprising was actually taking a look at the best structures, both shallow and offshore, that produce the most number of top three finishes on the Elite Series. Here's a chart of all the structures that guys fished to generate a top three finish, and as you can see, flats completely dominate every other type of structure. 
Now, some of you are probably wondering, what is a flat? And it's not talked about that much because it's pretty much the most boring type of structure there is. It's areas where the bottom of the lake is completely flat and there's no depth change. Or maybe the bottom goes from like a foot of water to five feet of water over a hundred yards. These are areas that are notoriously difficult to fish because there's no noticeable depth changes that you can focus on to find fish. Areas like points or ledges or humps are very easy to identify on a contour line map, which makes them really easy for an average fisherman to find quickly, especially if you understand your electronics and understand a contour map. However, because these areas are so obvious, they're fished by a lot of anglers, and therefore, on the Elite Series level, flats are a lot more effective because it's just harder to find groups of fish on flats as opposed to obvious pieces of structure. Now, one thing to call out is that a lot of guys think of flats as these shallow water areas. However, you can have offshore flats as well. And the way I differentiate an offshore flat versus a shallow water flat is that any flat that is in less than five feet of water is considered shallow water, in my opinion. And then flats that are deeper than five feet of water are considered an offshore flat. If we take a look at the data, you can see that by filtering all these structures for both offshore areas and shallow water areas, the offshore flats are still dominant over all other pieces of structure, as well as the shallow water flats. So flats in general are just really good producers of high tournament finishes, regardless of whether you're fishing offshore or shallow. And I actually made a video about flats last year and talked about how pros fish flats a lot to get high finishes in tournaments because it takes a lot more time and it's a lot harder to find fish on these flat nothing looking areas because you can't use your contour map to identify the good spots. Basically what you need to do is look at the map, look for the area where you see the least interesting offshore structure where there's no points, there's no ledges, there's no humps. Then get on your fish finder and just drive around randomly on these flat nothing looking areas until you find some sort of cover, whether that's a brush pile, a rock pile, or maybe a log that's just down there on the bottom. A lot of times you can find groups of fish set up on these isolated pieces of cover, but a lot of times you just find individual fish that you have to target. This is, again, a super time consuming process, but when it works, you can catch a lot of big fish. And pro fishermen do not talk about flats very often because they're basically the last type of structure that is untouched by the average angler. Most anglers are going to go look for the obvious structure spots, and that's why a lot of pros will talk about those areas. However, when they go to the tournaments, they ignore those areas because they get too much pressure and become community holes, and instead go for the less obvious, flat-looking areas that take more time but can produce better fish. And as you can see from these results, the flats are dominant on the Elite Series year over year over year. So if you guys are wanting to improve your tournament success, definitely check out the flats on your fishery. Take some time, drive around and idle. It can definitely result in some really big fish. And that's it for this video, guys. If you're still here after all that bass fishing data, you're definitely a bass fishing nerd just like me. Let me know in the comments down below if you made it to the end and also what you thought of all of my conclusions. Definitely check out that data set over at fishmoment.com and also leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Thanks again for checking out the video. We'll see you all in the next one.